The Christmas season is so much fun, but it also can bring so much to do. Am I right there, homeschool mom? Today I wanna to share with you though, some Christmas traditions that my family has done in hopes that it will help you kind of wade through all of the long lists of, you know, bucket list of Christmas of things to do and just kind of get you down to a couple of things that will create memories, but are also very simple and very budget friendly. Before we get started on today's video, welcome, my name is Lee. I'm so glad you're here at my channel, Little by Little Homeschool. Right here is where I share all the things about homeschooling. We talk about some tips and tricks and encouragement and behind the scenes, the reasons why we homeschool curriculum, just all those things and a lot more. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today I'm gonna to share with you six simple, family-friendly and budget-friendly Christmas traditions that you can incorporate this Christmas for your family. Family, whether you homeschool or not. Specifically, I usually talk about homeschool, so we'll just kind of assume that you're a homeschool family, but you don't have to be in order to incorporate these different things. These are things that my family has done over the years and continues to do every single year. I currently have three teenagers and we still do these things. So know that it can be done whether your child is six or 16 or anywhere in between, or maybe even a little bit older. But if you are interested in more information about how I homeschool and how I can encourage you, I offer a mentorship program through a course that I get to walk right alongside you in your homeschool. Whether you're brand new to homeschooling or you've been homeschooling for a while, let's get you to a place where you are thriving and excited and feeling joyful and a lot of peace about your homeschool. Okay, let's get started on the six family traditions that my family has done and I'm hoping that they are some things that maybe you wanna incorporate. You don't have to do all of them. Every family is unique. Incorporate what you'd like to and see what kind of works. Okay, so let's see. I have my cheat sheet here and I'm going to drop in the description down below a blog post for my blog that's not, my blog isn't specifically homeschool. I haven't added to it in a while, but if you just wanna go through and read this and have all of the links to different things that I might mention, it will be in that blog post. It's just much easier for me to go ahead and link that. Now I do have a couple other Christmas videos that I have just put out. I will drop them in the description down below too if you'd like more information about just some other things as far as you know specifics about Advent and specifics about how to navigate the Christmas season as a homeschool family. Let's take a look. All right, the first one, speaking of Advent, the first family tradition is actually celebrating Advent. And I did a whole video about that. Again, I'll just drop that down below. You can check that out. So I'm not going to talk about the different resources. That's basically what that video is, all different resources that you can choose from. They're within a different range of budgets. Some of them are free, so go ahead and check those uh, out. But just celebrating Advent is a time where your family can kind of gather together. My family still does this, and on Sunday evening specifically, you know, we get out our, our Advent wreath, and we'll light candles, and we'll sing hymns around it. It just is a time where your family can really bond and create memories together and focus on Christ during this Christmas season. So I encourage you, as a family, if you don't add any of these other things or you don't add anything else to your Christmas season, do Advent, whether it is something, and in that video I talk about the fact that Advent doesn't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be something that you do every day. There are different resources. There are so many options. You can create your own even. If you can do it once a week on a Sunday evening, that is perfect. If you wanna do something every single evening together as a family, go ahead and do that. Another option as a homeschool family is that you can incorporate Advent into your homeschool day. I've done that before where I've had multiple different Advents I wanted to do with my kids and we would do one during the school day. But I wanna encourage you that during this time with homeschooling, if you add an Advent to your Christmas season, like to your days for homeschool, take something out. Don't just simply add it to your already huge long list of things you're doing. Let me also add a side note cut down that list. Even if you don't add an advent, cut down that list for the Christmas season. It is so stressful. Nobody wants mom stressed out even more than she is. <laughs> so I encourage you to cut something out, especially if you're gonna add something, but even just go ahead. I give you permission to go ahead and cut something out. Now the second Christmas tradition we've done is giving gifts to neighbors. We now live back in the suburbs. We did live in the suburbs, then we moved states and uh, lived out in the country, only had one neighbor, and <laughs> we did give her a Christmas gift. But now we're back in the suburbs, so we have kind of made it our way of getting to know different neighbors. We've been here in this house for three years, and we moved in in November, so it was about a month and a half or so before Christmas, and we kind of got to know a, you know people a little bit here or there, but where we live, it gets cold, and and everybody starts to hibernate. So it was kind of a nice way to be able to reach out and get to know different neighbors just with a simple gift. 
Now this gift doesn't have to be anything expensive. What we did the past couple of years, and I just decided like, this is what we're gonna be known for. <laughs> we're just gonna do something that people are gonna be like, oh, I just look forward to, because I remember kind of growing up and a certain family would always give you something, a certain something for Christmas, and it was just kind of nice to be like, oh, that's what they always give and be always looking forward to it. This is so, what I decided to do a couple Christmases ago was to put together a cute little box. They're actually like um, holiday decorated takeout boxes with like a little um, handle, little metal handle. I've gotten them at Michael's. Okay, I'm gonna drop a blog post in the description below so to give you all this information. But my thought behind it is like, I have, you know, very diverse neighbors. I don't know what they want. I don't want to necessarily give them a gift. So I decided to do the potpourri. So in this little box, it would be everything like the orange, the clothes, the cinnamon sticks, and then in like a little instruction list. In that blog post, there is even a printable. You can use my printable. Print it out. It's free and then go ahead and attach it onto whatever container you want to use. You don't have to use those takeout boxes. I just thought they were just kind of fun, unique, a little bit different. But I encourage you, if you can, some type of like gift for neighbors. And now maybe you live in a neighborhood and there's like a hundred houses and you know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if you know 100 people, but just, you know, maybe you can be selective. I don't want this to be anything that becomes a burden financially for you. Pick a couple of neighbors and just give them something simple. Just let them know that uh, you're thinking about them this Christmas. And it's just, as a, it's a great time of the year where people are much more open and receptive to getting to know people. And so this was kind of our way into getting to know people and getting out our names with our faces. And since you have kids, People are always very open to kids coming and knocking on their door and giving them a gift as opposed to if I look out and there's like a man standing there. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, what's going on? But kids sitting at a door, giving a gift, I always send out, we'll make these together. My kids and I will make these together, deliver them to the different houses and so far so good. So we're gonna do that again this year. The third simple Christmas tradition is to pile everybody into the car and go drive around and look at Christmas lights. <laughs> it sounds so like, so simple and something that maybe people don't even think about doing. I remember doing this when I was younger. Now, as being a child of like the 70s, 80s, 90s there, there weren't as many lights to see as there are now. So maybe the novelty has worn off some, but my kids always just thought it was fun. When they were younger, I would get them into their pajamas and we would pile into the car and I would make some popcorn. They would have bags of popcorn and we would drive around and look at the lights, play Christmas music, and we would kind of vote on different ones. One thing we'd started to do is that if a house had uh, some type of manger scene out, we would give, you know, like kids loved it. My husband would be like a little beep beep, you know, on the car horn or something like that. And then years later we're like, Maybe they don't like that. Maybe that's kind of like a people are honking outside of my house sort of thing. But anyway, when my kids were little, they just thought that was so fun because they'd be like, yay, they have Jesus out there. They've incorporated, you know, Christ into the into the Christmas season. So we give a little honk. But anyway, you don't have to do the honking. But just want to encourage you, just think about something like that. Maybe you know some neighborhoods that have a lot of great lights. Maybe you live out in the country. This is a great thing, especially if you live out in the country where there aren't a lot of houses and maybe a lot of lights go ahead and drive into the suburbs and drive around and take a look at their different lights. Don't negate something that just seems so simple, but would just be really fun. And as my kids have gotten older, we've tried to do this. I'm, you know, last year we didn't have time. They're just, their schedules were just a little bit crazy. So I'm hoping that this year we can go ahead and, and uh, do that just, just for fun. I'm gonna say for like old time's sake, but younger children, this tradition is especially so much fun for them. Because when my kids were little, typically when it would get dark, we would be winding down, cleaning up, taking baths, getting ready for bed, and then here all of a sudden, one night mom would be like, all right, get your pajamas on, let's get in the car. So they thought it was super exciting to do. All right, number four on the list of simple family traditions is to teach your kids to give gifts to others. We can get so focused on gifts for ourselves, especially, you know, children. They're just so focused, they write out their list, this is what I would like for Christmas, and they just get really focused on that, that if we can turn their attention to giving to others as opposed to receiving, it really does like kind of change their mindset. So this can be in the form of a couple different things. You could do gifts among each other. We started this when my children were uh, pretty young, elementary school age, every Christmas for I, I'm a very long time. My kids will get a gift for each other. Now, when they were really young, we would just give them money. It would be maybe like a $5 limit or something and I would take them shopping. Sometimes I have to take them together. We try to take them separately so they could buy gifts for each other, but that did get a little bit crazy at times but they just thought it was so much fun. Now, as they have gotten older, they still do this, but they all have some type of jobs uh, outside of the home. So they're all responsible now for, 
you know, purchasing the, on their own to using their own money. We still have like a money limit so that one person doesn't go and spend $50, one person spends $5. We do put a money limit on, sometimes it's been $10, 15, 20, I let them kind of decide that. But anyway, the giving of gifts to each other as a family, the giving of gifts to others. Uh, there's also things to get involved in such as Operation Christmas Child. We have done that and uh, our church is a drop-off point and we got more involved in that this year, which is a lot of fun. So we will then go out and purchase the gifts, fill up some Christmas boxes and then deliver them. And then but I want to encourage you that if any way you can get your kids focused on giving gifts to others and they can learn like the joy that comes from giving something, especially when you know that it's something that somebody really wants. I know that my kids have been really excited every single year to give each other gifts. And one other little thing that we've done is that on Christmas Eve morning, usually, we'll let them exchange gifts. Now when they were little, because by the time you get to Christmas Eve day, they're just chomping at the bit. They're just so excited to receive gifts. <laughs> We're like, okay, they're also excited to give gifts. We're like, okay, I started doing the tradition years ago that they would give each other their gifts on Christmas Eve morning. That kind of held them off for the day and would give them the opportunity to give and to receive and just kind of chill them out a little bit. So that tradition has continued even, even through the years, even though they're all teens, they'll still do that. Not necessarily for the purpose of that, but it just kind of helps to spread out uh, the Christmas giving of gifts for those two days. The fifth Christmas tradition that my family does is Christmas caroling. Now we've not done this every single year and this works much easier if your kids are at least late elementary. As I mentioned earlier, we moved back to the suburbs and we moved here three years ago and it was in November and we really wanted to be able to get to know our neighbors. Just really felt, I, to me, I just felt really strongly that I wanted to get to know neighbors. We had a lot of friends also that hadn't seen where we had moved yet and so this was kind of like a double opportunity. So we, I just invited everybody that I knew who had kids, families and said, hey, come on over on this certain night, I think it was a Friday or Saturday evening, come on over and uh, we'll go Christmas caroling. So everybody gathered at our house and I went out beforehand and purchased like battery operated candles and had them all ready. It just kind of gave like a vintage kind of feel instead of people using the flashlights like on their cell phones or something. So we carried those around. I picked out a couple of songs, had them all printed out. Everybody had their own sheet and we just went around. We kind of only stuck to our block because I just set a time limit. I said, we're not gonna do this for more than an hour. I didn't want everybody to get all kind of, you know, worn out from it. What you can do is set up a time for everybody to meet somewhere. You don't have to do it at your house. This was an opportunity for everybody to come to our house and see where we were living then too. Because after we went Christmas caroling, we had everybody come on over, come inside. I mean, the house was like trash, everybody shoes, jackets everywhere. We really didn't have a lot of furniture then. People were sitting on the floor, hanging from the ceiling, not really. But uh, we had hot chocolate and uh, water because everybody's was very parched from singing for an hour and uh, Christmas cookies and we just had a really good time together playing games and that kind of stuff. But caroling, people don't do that anymore. And you should have seen the look on like our neighbors' faces when we showed up to go Christmas caroling. We'd ring the doorbell, we'd sing a song or two, but only like one or two verses. We didn't want to do it too long. It gets kind of awkward if you're standing there and someone's singing to you for 15 minutes. But we always ended with, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And then afterwards, uh, James or I would go up and meet the neighbors. It really is just a way to get to know people. And it just has um, just a comforting feel from like back in the day. And people are very receptive to it. If you want to use this opportunity to maybe uh, have some type of little gift or something to give to your neighbors at that time, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to use it as some type of outreach, you can include maybe a book or a devotional about the Christmas story, whatever you want to do. It's just a great way to get to know neighbors. Another option is to go ahead and go Christmas caroling, maybe at some different people's houses that you know aren't able to get out. Maybe there's a couple shut-ins, maybe call your local church or your church and find out if there are any families that are just having a rough time this year that maybe you all can pile into cars instead and go and drive to their houses and uh, sing to them. Number six on my list of simple, family-friendly, that are really budget-friendly Christmas traditions is movie nights. Simple, very simple. Now back in the day, you'd have to have a VHS or a DVD of every movie you wanted to watch, but now you can watch almost anything online. So don't discount the fact that you can get into your pajamas, pile onto the couch, you know, throw some pillows on the floor, grab some blankets, cozy up, make some popcorn, 
and watch your favorite Christmas movies. There are so many different options. On our list is Always White Christmas. That one's my favorite. Um, Elf, Charlie Brown Christmas. There's just so many different options. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. We like the original uh, cartoon version of it. Go ahead and do that a couple times during the month. It's a great way to get everybody to slow down, stop running around, and just be together. I hope this was helpful for you, gave you some ideas of just some simple ways to celebrate the Christmas season with your family. So the six ways, I'm gonna use my, to celebrate Advent together, um, gifts for neighbors and you know, for others, Christmas light tour, uh, gift giving to each other, uh, maybe there's some type of service project that you can do as well, some way you can bless another family, five is Christmas caroling, and six is family movie nights. I hope that was helpful. If you have other family Christmas traditions that fall under like a simple budget friendly category, go ahead and drop that in the comment section below. Or if you do any of these, let me know as well. So Merry Christmas and we'll see you next time.